the taxis in Rome you see are yellow or sometimes they're green, dark green, but they're always fiats. Hardly uh, ever anything else. Occasionally you see one that says another, but nearly all fiats. Fabrica Italiana Automobili Tobi. Entrance here, you see, to uh, St. Mary of the uh, Angels uh, Basilica. Now, actually, that's a church uh, which uh, stands on exactly the same site, and in fact, within the grounds of the Bards of Diocletian, the largest of the ancient Roman Bards. A, um, an art gallery inside it. exhibits in the British Museum and he sees this uh, this fossil behind the glass uh, behind glass and there is a uniformed attendant there so he calls him over he says excuse me my good man I told you this one huh? Huh? he says excuse me my good man but do you know how old that is that thing there in the glass case he says, certainly, sir. That is 10 million and seven years old. He said, that's fantastic. Wonderful. He says, such accuracy. I mean, how do you know it's 10 million and seven years old? He says, well, sir, I mean, I've been, lived, I've been working here at the museum now for seven years. It was 10 million years old when I came to work here. <laughs> He looks in there. He says, good Lord. He says, Tony Curtis doesn't have his hair cut like this. He says, he does if he comes in here.
stop in uh, on the highway for lunch at the self-service cafeteria. Then we go to uh, Pisa, which belongs to Tuscany, by the way. This is the region of Tuscany. We've crossed out of Umbria, and uh, Tuscany is where you'll find that uh, beautiful city of Florence, but also Pisa and Siena. Uh, Pisa, in fact, is situated also on the river Arno, just like uh, Florence. And at Pisa, we'll pause to have a look at the uh, Leaning Tower, the uh, Baptistry, and the Cathedral. Also use it as a, an afternoon coffee break. And then we go off along a really superb uh, highway, one of the most fantastic highways anywhere in the world, uh, to Genoa. Now, it won't really appear so fantastic, I suppose, um, because uh, that uh, highway has been built on stilts, high viaducts, uh, and also tunnels through the uh, Apennines in many places. But uh, by the time we get to Nice, which will be, of course, tomorrow, we shall have driven through 163 tunnels. He said, well, look here. We don't have any vacancies right now in heaven. I'd have to ask you to wait for a little bit, for maybe a hundred years, two hundred years, before we can find a vacancy for you. We'll call, we'll call you when we have a vacancy. Thank you very much. Next, please. I told you this, did I not? No. Oh. Nance drives up. He says, uh, to me, he says, yes, sir, what were you when you were alive? He said, St. Peter, I was an engineer. So Peter said, well, we're uh, awfully crowded up here in heaven right now. He says, well, we will call for you when we have a vacancy. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to wait in hell. And then we'll call for you when we have a vacancy. Next, please. Man strides up. So Peter says, yes, sir, what were you when you were alive? He says, well, St. Peter, I was a tour director uh, working for Travelers International. So Peter said, young man, come in. You've had your share of hell. <laughs> Bertie in the hospital. Did I? Yeah. I did. That was a different time. Mm. And he had his, uh, you know, he had both his legs up, you know, uh, plaster, and he had cuts and bruises all over him. I said, Bertie, uh, I said, what happened to you? He said it was like this. I was doing a steady 30 miles an hour down the uh, motorway with my little Ford Anglia, and this fast Italian Maserati, he shoots past me, and he was going so fast that I thought that I'd stopped, so I got out.
this man, uh, he, uh, he telephones the hospital. He says, can I speak to the chief nurse, please? She says, chief nurse speaking. He says, yes, oh yes, now I'm inquiring about Mr. Joe Green in Ward C7. She said, yes, now Mr. Joe Green had his operation last Wednesday. It's getting on very nicely and we expect he'll be out in two days' time. He said, thank you very much. She said, by the way, who's that speaking, please? He said, Joe Green, nobody tells you a thing in here.
that? He said, I was the one that set fire to him. Teacher, you know, in the classroom, she says, uh, Now, children, who knocked down the wall of Jericho? One little boy in the front said, I didn't do it, teacher, it wasn't me. She's appalled. Appalled. She thinks, Right, I'll have to go and see this boy's uh, mother. So that evening, she goes round there, knocks on the door. She says, uh, Mrs. Jones? Yes. I happen to be uh, Billy's school teacher. This morning, I said to the children, who knocked down the wall of Jericho, and your little boy said, uh, said, well, it wasn't me, she said, I didn't do it. I mean, what have you got to say about that? She said, well, if my Billy said he didn't knock it down, he didn't knock it down. <laughs> so, uh, she thinks, my goodness me, she's terrible, terrible. I'll have to go and see uh, Billy's father tomorrow. Following in the evening, she knocks on the door. She says, uh, you've been his father, yes. She says, ah. She says, well, yesterday morning, I said uh, to uh, the class, uh, who knocked down the wall at Jericho? And your little boy, Billy, said, I didn't do it, teacher. So I came last night and I saw your wife. And she said, well, if my Billy said he didn't knock it down, he didn't knock it down. I mean, what if, Mr. Jones, what have you got to say about this? He said, well, oh, you know, uh, Miss, I can understand your concern. He says, uh, my goodness me. He says, look here, um, I don't want any trouble. Just how much was this wall? <laughs> A marble uh, has been created out of the skeletons and shells of countless millions of tiny sea animals called crustaceans. Ages ago, literally ages ago, uh, their uh, uh, remains sank to the bottom of the uh, sea and then in time they were covered uh, with mud and sediment and uh, pressed into uh, limestone. And then it metamorphosed, I think that's the scientific word they use, metamorphosed into uh, marble in time. But commercially speaking, any calcium carbonate stone, that's marble quarry in the world, I think I could say that without uh, really fear of contradiction. And so, uh, Genoa, like Venice, was a naval state, independent. And the Genoese fought against the Venetians, but they were defeated by the Venetians at the Battle of Chioggia in 1380. And yet, uh, Genoa has survived, uh, uh, so that it is today the principal port uh, of Italy, and Venice has lost out in competition with uh, Genoa. People say, well, it's not really surprising because the Genoese have a reputation, you know, for being um, uh, 
very realistic, very fine businessmen, and the Venetians have this reputation for being dreamers and art lovers. There's this old Latin expression, Genuensis ergo mercator, Genoese, therefore a merchant. Actually, folks, Jan tells me that when we arrive at the hotel, he's not going to open the middle door. Uh, because uh, he, what he wants to do is to try to save some of your lives. He says it's dangerous. And that uh, what he would rather do is just open the front door. Genoa, by any means, uh, uh, consists of these large, uh, I mean, wide streets. In Genoa, we have what they call Karuji, and those are uh, narrow alleys. The word is not used anywhere else except in, believe it or not, Monaco, because uh, the ruling family of Monaco came originally from Genoa. The language of Monaco is uh, Genoese. So it's not a word that's in general use in Italy, this word Karuji, but here it means narrow alleys, the kind of uh, thing that you see around the docks. Uh, coming up uh, ahead of us, there is a square called the Piazza dei Ferrari, and in that square is a fountain. People are encouraged to throw coins into that fountain to ensure that they will pay a return visit to Genoa. But as it's not such a beautiful city, Compared to Rome, you know, you don't find many coins in that fountain. Not too many people want to come back to Genoa. But in the Trevi fountain of Rome, of course, there are lots of coins. Cavour, the politician. There was uh, Giuseppe Garibaldi, Jean II, the first king, 